Earl, Tyvis. We had our best Guardians clip in terms of views in quite a while yesterday when we debated the Guardians' decision to send Kyle Manzardo and Chase the Ladder down to the minor leagues to start the season. So I was trying to think, okay, we can't argue about that again. By the way, let yes. me just comment on that for a second because on my podcast yesterday, I interviewed Jim Duquette, former big league GM. He now does a show with Mike Farron, who's a friend of mine on, on MLB radio. Uh, check out the podcast, The Bullpen with Adam the Bull on YouTube. But he didn't have a problem with the Guardians sending those guys down, especially the lottery. He doesn't think he's ready to play in the majors yet. And, uh, but he understands why fans are aggravated. And he does think the Guardians made a lot of mistakes this offseason in terms of how, how they allocated money. But he, he has no problem with Manzar. And he, was try- he argued that it's not necessarily about uh, service time because of the rule changes... Because if Manzardo, and he's right in this vein, that if Manzardo comes up and finishes top, ends up finishing top three for rookie of the year, like the Guardians lost a year of service time for Tanner, B- Tanner Bybee because he, so he finished well top year. three rookie yeah. of the year. He, he, but they also gained the draft pick. So there are advantages to the team as well. I just wanted to say, you know, say that from his perspective. I thought it was an interesting point. So go ahead. So I was trying to think of another topic for the Guardians because, as you mentioned yesterday, there's just not a ton of excitement as they get ready to open the season. No. What is it? One week away from today is official opening day? Yes. Hmm. So I figured we'd go back. Let's go back in time. In your opinion, Bo, I'll start with you. We can make our way around. Who's the most underrated Indians Guardians player of all time? I mean, it's hard. Uh, Tyvis and I were talking about this early. I rattled off like. 15 Yeah, years. and you, one of the guys you thought I was going to say was Larry Doby, and I think Larry Doby, and he's not my answer. I do think he's been undervalued in terms of breaking the color barrier because yes. Jackie Robinson, deservedly so, is talked about a ton, but Larry Doby played shortly after Jackie Robinson and had to deal with all the same awfulness that Jackie Robinson had to deal <laughs> with, and I, and I say this that he should have been – he should have been nationally recognized more, not taking anything away from Jackie Robinson. shouldn't be any less for Jackie. It should have just been additionally more for Larry Dovey. But my answer is a weird one because he wasn't really underrated for much of the time he was here. But my answer is Corey Kluber, and here's why. Because Corey Kluber is one of the, for a time, was one of the best pitchers the Guardians, the Indians at the time, have ever had. He had a stretch of seasons that are one of the best five-year stretches in the history of the franchise. And in the playoffs in 2016, when the Guardians or the Indians went to the World Series, everybody talks about, remembers Andrew Miller that year because Mm -hmm. he was magnificent and dominated for most of the playoffs. But in Game 7 of the World Series, Andrew Miller struggled. But nobody really criticizes Andrew Miller for that, which they shouldn't because he was overworked, and even Terry (laughs) Francona says that. But Corey Kluber, it's like revisionist history. People look back and kind of shit on Corey Kluber because he pitched terribly in Game 7 of the World Series. But he was so overworked. Remember, Trevor Bauer had the accident. We busted up his finger and couldn't pitch in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Carlos Carrasco was hurt that year. The The Indians... That their number two starter in the playoffs was Josh Tomlin. I mean, I don't know if fans remember that. Josh Tomlin was not a good pitcher. So, Damn. Corey Kluber. Never heard of him. I remember Josh Tomlin. He yeah, was not that good. He was not very ne- good. Never heard of Corey him. Corey Kluber <laughs> was asked to do an insane amount, way more than Andrew Miller, to carry the Cleveland Indians. Without, without Corey Kluber, the Indians do not sniff the World Series that year. They probably don't get out of the first round. He was so lights out. And I remember game one of the World Series when Corey Kluber pitched against the Cubs at, at, in progressive field. And I was at this game, and I, was, I never sat down the whole time. I wandered around the stadium the whole game. Uh, and I remember at the end of the first inning, because the Cubs got a little rally going with a couple little, I think, dinks and dunks and had a chance to score in the first inning. Kluber got out of it. And I remember saying to myself, oh, that's it. That's it. They're not going to score against him. And then he was lights out again in game in game four 
when he gave the, the Indians a 3-1 lead. Hmm. By the time he had pitched in Game hmm. 7, he had been going on three days rest for the third time. He was shot. It was miraculous. He was able to lift his arm. And by the way, his career pretty much went down the tube soon after that. And I, when I spoke to Francona a few weeks ago, and I told him that, that fans were critical of Corey Kluber, like, he, he couldn't believe it. I guess he didn't realize that. Corey Kluber was the toughest SOB that I've ever seen pitch for this team. And, you know, he and Sabathi, I'd say. And, uh, and, and the fact that he's discredited after that is, is a disgrace. And so he went from being fairly rated for much of his career to being now underrated big time when we look back. But that guy was an absolute superstar and for, for a few years was the best pitcher in baseball. So Corey Kluber's my guy. Man, I'm still pissed about that blown 3-1 lead. That, that still hurt. So for me... Because we was literally about to, We just had the Cavs and the Guardians or yeah. Indians was about to do they it. They was about it. to do it. You know, I was at games four and five at Wrigley Field. Yeah, shout out to uh, Holly for getting you tickets. That's right. You knew that. Right. I remember. Oh, you did. <laughs> I got me face value tickets. I remember at that Why time. Why does... How? How? She had a hookup. I don't know. I remember at that time, I think Danny Salazar was dealing with an injury. He was hurt, too. Yeah, well, yeah. he was always hurt. Though. He was always <laughs> hurt, but it was just like, man, throw something at him. So this was tough for me, man. I'm not the biggest baseball dude, but when I thought about the question more and more. You said Rajah Davis. No, I said Omar Vizquel. Oh, that's and I'm going to tell one. you why I said Omar. I grew up a fan of those teams in the 90s. And I remember I used to be able to list off, you know, the whole star lineup. And we often talk about the power hitters, the dudes who always mm-hmm. they hit a bunch of home runs. But Omar was great defensively, he, and he was great in small ball. He could turn a, he, like, he can turn a single, an uh, infield single, and get down the line. Mm-hmm. He was always a dude that was still in the base in the crucial moments. And so it was the little things that he did that always had huge payoff and made the biggest difference that always made me like Omar. But, like, when you talk about greatest Guardians or Indians players or especially the players at that time, we talk about the home run hitters. We talk about Manny. We talk about Jim Tomey mm-hmm. and Carlos Bayarga and Albert Bell and all those dudes. But Omar played a significant role in the Indians having success during those times. Well, for that reason, I was going to say Raja Davis. I think it's a good choice. That's a Omar's great choice. A good choice. But it, Very it, good choice. it's only one real answer to this question. Is Mike Zanino. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Zanino. Mike Zanino. Oh, my God, Tyvis. Why was Mike Zanino underrated, Tyvis? Mike Zanino explain. was underrated because he chose to come to the Guardians. And, yes, he got paid. But for those, what, eight games? <laughs> How many games nah, did he play for more us? Than that. Like 43. Those yeah. 43 games, our, the catcher position, he was gunning stuff down. No. <laughs> <laughs> he was though. a he was a decent hitter. No, <laughs> he was horrible. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I, my friend of the show actually he's he's watching and he chimed in on this, yeah. and he actually has he makes a good point. He says it's Carlos Carrasco because he had Tommy John surgery in 2012 and was one of the best starters and led the AL in wins in 2017. I so, just felt like the fans loved him. I, but I think but do people been... put him as like? Like, I feel like they don't say he's, like, the greatest pitcher we ever had or anything well, like that. Well, but he wasn't. Uh, he right. was never the best pitcher on the team, but I do think he was underrated under- nationally. Exactly. Nationally, he was a little underrated. He, he was never given a, the credit. That- I mean, the comeback from Tommy John surgery, I mean, back then, like, when you had that, it was, like, over with. No. It was. 2012? What are you talking about? It was over with. No. I mean, the medicine no. got better. He could have came back. Bob Feller would have never came back from Tommy John. Yeah, John right. Surgery. I guess you got a point there. Cookie back now, so we go, you know. But it's still yeah. it's still Mike Zanino and Austin Hedges. Well, excuse mm-hmm. me, World Series champion mm-hmm. Austin Hedges. That's true. What's, what's, more, what's a more fraudulent statement? <laughs> World Series champion Austin Hedges or pro bowler Tyler Huntley. <laughs> or winning winning starting quarterback PJ Walker. Walker. Well, first Oh of all, yeah. Well, Phillips <laughs> not even in this. I don't even know why you put him in this category. Hey, right? it's absurd just like everything uh, else. That's um, true. That's actually a good question. Yeah. The World Series Jerry Austin Hood just like pro bowl. T- <laughs> it has to it has to be more absurd for Tyler Huntley because he threw two The Huntley's the worst one. Is is that, because even though he was like the 
12th choice, he still shouldn't have been picked. Was yes. Austin Hedges starting catcher? No, but he, so he it's played a part- one game. it's a participation trophy for But him. he played one out of seven games. He did play in one game. Yes. Did but he have a that's hit? A, that's a participation trophy. Probably not. Well, Ty- Tyler Huntley making the Pro he Bowl. He actually played, though. <laughs> he threw two touchdowns. But he was terrible. He didn't do anything. Wasn't he like the sixth or seventh alternate, though, for the Pro Bowl? He should have been the 50th alternate. <laughs> He had two crazy. touchdowns. Listen, if they were going to pick a Put it in Poland. Uh, wait, well, I'm just we saying, though, he got to the Pro Bowl like 40% of the quarterbacks that was invited couldn't go. Oh, like. We had the debate on the show when it happened. Jacoby Brissett's numbers were significantly better than Tyler Huntley. Did Ty, what was Forget Jacoby Brissett. There had to be other guys better than both. Well, I'm just saying, like, they picked Huntley over someone like Brissett. I know, but what was Tyler Huntley's re- What was his record sense. that year? Are you kidding All me right, right now? <laughs> Tyler Huntley probably would like break. he I'll probably would like break. five and one. No chance. <laughs> he threw two touchdowns. So if he went five and one and threw two touchdowns, and that's another. Then it would. Then that would be Philip did it. That would be a, a <laughs> Philip. Tyvis, he wins. went his Pro Bowl. Are you ready for this? Yeah. In his Pro Bowl season, he played in six games, started four, two and two record, two touchdowns, three picks. <laughs> yeah. So Philip is. They should have been the. I mean, All average, I heard. A bull gets better. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> He averaged 109 passing yards per game. That was the weird. I'd like to actually know. I wonder if every other quarterback said no, like secretly. They, they went down the list, including Jacoby Brissett, and like 25 guys <laughs> yeah. said no. And Tyler Huntley's like, all right, what the hell? <laughs> I'll <laughs> do this. To Hawaii, or for sure. He, he should have been the last choice of any quarterback that played year, that year. <laughs> Hey, if, man, how can you even, like, how can you even celebrate that? Like, how do you tell, y'all yeah, made the Pro Bowl. <coughs> oh, Nick Carnes oh, had a tweet up about so, the Pro Bowl quarterback. So, 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 so fact. The Browns have three Pro Bowl quarterbacks in their yeah. quarterback room. How many times did Jameis make the Pro Bowl? Once? Once. What was it, the 30-30? No, was it? Uh, I'll tell you one sec. <laughs> the Pro Bowl's a joke now. I mean, uh, yeah. it shouldn't even count. It, only the starters should be named I told Pro you, it, yeah, it should be. The whoever makes it, it any alternate don't even get don't the title. No, you don't get Jameis the title. made the Pro Bowl his rookie season, believe really? it or not. His rookie season, he threw for 4,000 yards, 22 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. He was the third alternate. But made it as a Pro Bowl. Jameis threw so for, say he was for a, He's not a legit Pro Bowler either because he was an alternate. <laughs> for Jameis threw for – Oh, yeah, Deshaun got to come for <laughs> I thought you were about to say year. something. Now. <laughs> D.Y. got to come 45 next year. Jameis threw for 42 as a rookie? Uh, 4,042. And that was in 16 games. 16 games. He attempted 535 passes that season. That's ridiculous. (laughs) He's always throwing a boatload of passes. It was was a deep air raid offense, yeah. All right. Crazy. All right. That'll wrap us up. I am excited about Personally, I know there's not a ton of buzz for baseball right now, especially in Cleveland, but I enjoyed watching the two Padres-Dodgers game. 15 game. to 11. 15 11. It was That's a fun ridiculous. game this morning. 